Venus, here we come. What is wrong with this radio? Welcome back. You've seen Mars. Who hasn't? Done to death. Jupiter? Meh. Saturn? Boring. Dipsy diving with the natives on Europa. Somebody wake me up. Chuck all those snooze fest in the trash because we have something special just for the first 10 callers. Yes, sir, Bob, we've moved on from playing on space tourism. None of this flying over the dark side of the moon for hyper rich tourists. It's 2087, not 2017. For a limited time, Ben's Lab Mystery Tours, in conjunction with Timex, have a ripper for you. Venus! What's that you say? Venus is the Florida of the solar system? How can that possibly be exciting? I don't want to fall asleep in the upper atmosphere, enjoying the sun and mild temperatures on some cloud city. They're like retirement villages, man. Okay, well, how about we forget the cloud cities then? We've put together, for the extreme, extreme sports nuts out there, a holiday from hell. In hell. Take a walk on Venus. I hear your bowels clenching. Good. Venus is hardcore. Venus wants to eat you alive and spit you out. Did you know our ancestors thought Venus was a beacon of serenity drifting peacefully in the heavens? Ha! They thought Venus was a cloud covered blue green marble like our own little planet. Well, they were right, sort of. They just had bad timing. Almost there! Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. We hope you've enjoyed flying with Time X. We are now beginning our descent and will be decelerating from hyperspace as we speak. If you look at your window, you will see Venus approaching as we begin our descent to the planet. Please observe all safety and warning signs. Please listen to your flight attendant's instructions. And once again, thank you for flying Time X. the same time, forming from a molecular cloud made of gas, dust and other muck drifting around our own newly formed sun. Earth got lucky. We were at just the right distance from the sun for water to exist in a liquid state on the surface. Venus is just within this little strip of safety called the Goldilocks Zone. For half a billion years or so, Earth had a real twin. It was beautiful. Sure, Venus is pretty much the same size as Earth with almost identical gravity, but those two things did not a paradise make. What Venus had back then was oceans. Continents even. Venus kind of looked like Earth. Am I selling it yet? Sounds pretty sleepy, doesn't it? If you nutcases can't handle the peace and quiet, go stick your head in a volcano on Io. Call now. This is a once in a lifetime experience. I have a caller. Let's see who it is. It's Jasper. Jasper wants to know what happened to Venus then? How did an Earth like planet transform into an inferno with crushing clouds of sulfuric acid and carbon dioxide? What about that atmospheric pressure? 92 times our own. I agree, Jasper. That's just plain silly. Well, at the risk of driving away listeners, I'm going to tell you. If I explain why Venus is the nastiest place in the solar system, I reckon the phones will be ringing off the hook. It's all about water. Back on Earth, water isn't just used to make fizzy drinks and fill swimming pools. It isn't just necessary for all life. The planet needs water as well. Really. I know, I know, boring lesson time. The planet has a hydrological cycle. Oceans are vast heat sinks, storing heat and influencing climate. Water evaporates, creating rain and clouds, which not only buggers when we've just unclosed them in the line, they also reflect a lot of sunlight and heat back out in the space. The planet's reflectivity is called its albedo. Now, this is all true and all very important, blah, 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 but water performs one other vital function. It lubricates the planet. Long ago, Earth looked like this. Later, it looked like this. Then this. Then this. Plate tectonics, my friends. The continents are basically slabs of crust, which happen to be less dense than the crusty ocean floor is made of. So they float and slide around, moving very slowly, and definitely moving. Ladies and gentlemen, please return to your seats. We are about to engage the time drive for a quick look at Venus circa 3 billion years ago. Thank you. 
plate tectonics and other events in the Earth's crust perform an important task. They release heat from the planet's core. Now this planet contains a liquid metal core which is kept superheated by the decay of radioactive elements left over from Earth's formation. If the planet's crust didn't fracture and split all the time, where would all this heat go? Well, nowhere of course. The planet would just heat up and heat up, overheating until it became, well, it became Venus. And we don't want that. So, what the heck does what have to do with this, you ask? We don't care anymore, Ben. We get it. Shut up and take our money. Impatient lot, aren't you? Well, you can't hurry education. Remember those car things the old timers used to drive around? Remember how they had to put oil in to stop the engines seizing up? Well, if the Earth's crust isn't kept lubricated by vast amounts of water running deep, then it too will seize up. This is sort of what's happened to Venus, partly at least. The planet's surface is now so hot as a result of this runaway negative feedback that it can melt lead. Really. Better make sure you pack a decent spacesuit, extreme sports fans, when it can handle temperatures at 490 degrees Celsius. Make sure the electronics are tough too. It was only due to the advent of electronics that could operate in these temperatures that rovers and eventually humans were able to reach down and touch the Venusian dirt. Now all you rugged outdoorsy types, don't bring a compass. Yeah, of course it's a great idea. No, that won't work. Period. Venus has practically no magnetic field. This is a side effect of its core shutting down long ago. The folks up on those cloud cities have it pretty good. Sure, hardcore acid rain is a pain, having to wear oxygen masks all the time can be annoying, but by and large, however, it was a brilliant idea. But those cloudies have no idea what's below them. I know it's not pretty. Not a drop of water anywhere. A few wisps in the atmosphere. 0.002% of it is water vapor, I think. Down on the freshly formed lava plains, by fresh reed, less than 100 million years old, though, nada, zilch. But Venus is close to the Sun, a lot closer than Earth at 108 million k's. The Sun, being the vicious ball of fury it is, is constantly punishing the inner planets with solar radiation. Poor old Mercury is completely dead, baked clean by its proximity to the Sun. Now Venus held on the atmosphere for a while, but when it's caught bit the dust, that's when things went south. Earth has a magnetic field which protects life on Earth from harmful cosmic and solar rays. Sure, we can sunburn sometimes, but that's a damn sight better than being baked to death or having our DNA so damaged by radiation all life would perish from lethal mutations. Without a magnetic field, Venus's one time oceans were slowly stripped and cast into space. Even today, traces of this water are being ripped away by solar rays and sent out into the big empty. Still sound like fun. There's always some hard case out there who just can't listen to good sense. Operators are standing by. Oh, and one other thing. Feel free to call in and let me know exactly what happened to Venus's core, 